uh, Kevin Lewis, and I'm from Minnesticwin Lake Cree Nation. So the resource that we're developing is uh, one is a case study, and it's a case study of the uh, the Cree immersion school, and then also the the Kanyasa culture camps and how they work together. But the focus was um, was uh, based on what the parents are wanting, and what the uh, and then also what the what the students want. So there's always this focus of like. What do, what do we want as adults and parents and teachers? But um, this specific one was, uh, was one that was done by a Maori scholar that had come and visited here, that came here. And uh, we were kind of discussing it for, for a couple of years now. And then, and then she finally came here and took part in you know, the activities that we have here. And then she interviewed the children and uh, all the all the students that wanted to be interviewed, um, she collected data that way, and then she talked to a couple of the the parents as well, and then she also talked to the to the elder, and then also the principal, and then also myself, and her name's Doctor Melanie Rui Couch, so she's um, she's from Christchurch originally from the Naitahu tribe, and uh, she came here and spent. Uh, you know, a, a little bit of time, twice actually she came to, to Canada and uh, shared what they were doing over there and then hosted us over there four times. So there was the, there was a little relationship building there that we were doing from our nation to what are the amazing things that they're doing. And then we kept on asking her to see, okay, well, would you be kind of like an external reviewer? And then we kept on asking about like okay what type of what type of assessments do you guys do to mark your progress in terms of the Maori language and then um, she was a at the time she was a principal of a Maori school that we went to go see her multiple times and then her children are fluent in Maori so it was like kind of like somebody that walks the talk you know and then that's exactly who we wanted to do the case study on our school. So it's <clears throat> kind of like a, um, a case study slash uh, assessment on the entire program. And the way she wrote it was beautiful. So it's in draft mode right now, but we're so close to having it available for everybody to see. And it'll be available through our website and then maybe I'll link it to you know this, this project. See the the external review uh, on the on the federal schools, like a federal meaning First Nation schools, the reserve schools. Every five years, there's somebody that'll come there, and what they'll do is they'll check, you know, how the kids are doing for, with their math. They'll check uh, how they're doing in their reading and writing, the the literacy rates, right? And not everybody's checked, but it's kind of like uh, certain grades. And that's what we were after, but we didn't want to wait five years. We were kind of like, okay, we're in this now. We have one year under our belts. Um, let's hire somebody to come help us out right away. And then at least we have that, that marker that we can say, okay, this is where we are now. And then, you know, maybe uh, a couple of years down the line, we'll do even a, a different type of assessment, right? And then something that we're kind of working on congruently right now with, with the case study. So I think the case study was sort of like that, the snapshot. And the snapshot is um, coming from not my perspective, but it's important to see the work that she has done over there and with her people in their, in their country. And then for her to come sort of look at what, you know, and then, and then look at us and sort of empower us as well because she she really liked what she saw and the way she wrote it was also very intelligent because um like i said it, it came from the children and then it didn't come from the administration it didn't come from the teachers it didn't come from the school board it came from the elders and then also the parents what they wanted and wished and then also assessing the kids on 
or what you know what, how does Cree make you feel you know and those type of um, reflections and that context is in in the writing there um I think the main point was actually uh, I wanted to see what the parents want or were or like uh, their headspace or their their hearts or where they were at but also more importantly I wanted I was so curious to see what those kids are saying you know um last year we did this exercise and I think we took this from like a Montessori type of uh exercise where they assess kids but it was different from the way you know the regular schools assess kids regular school assess kids is they they would they would say uh well this is um this is kim and kim this is her problem and this is also her problem and this is her problem and then you know that type of assessment and you know this is what we should do it's really good at doing that but uh what i wanted to do and we wanted to do was i was curious on what their strengths were because there they all there's these multiple intelligences and i was it was small enough group that you could do uh, individualized education programs but based on their strengths like if they loved singing well get them singing you know or if they were artists well let's build the you know the artist and design side of them so i think that's what my curiosity was as a researcher an indigenous researcher but also a parent you know, a parent that has my, my kids are in there. So I, in a way I'm invested in there uh, wholeheartedly from that side, but also what I saw in Europe, or uh, yeah, actually Europe, uh, in Sweden, um, what I saw in Hawaii, in Peru, and also in Australia and New Zealand. I saw that, you know, and I thought, well, geez, you know, they're doing it. Let's do it here. You know, and we, we've tried it a couple times in the bigger school as well. This is not, this was not an overnight thing. This took us probably about 10 years to sort of really develop it. Actually a lot longer, but I'm just going to say 10 years. I think the resource is... Uh, how I see it and read it so far, and uh, because it's in draft mode right now, is um, the like it's an indigenous scholar that wrote it, and it was an indigenous scholar that has experience in that area. So she is very knowledgeable in policy development, dealing with provinces or the the federal government, and dealing with the language act, and dealing with all these different similar um, similar strategies you know these methodologies that are working there they could work here as well so i think that's the benefit okay so the resource is called structured assessments framework for land-based learning at gynastic culture camps so this um this document is uh what we're looking at is there are ways that are de that are developed uh, in in the Western framework, you know, a Western lens. But what we're trying to do is um, because we see the benefits of taking students or anybody out outdoors, we see the benefits of them working with um, canine or equine therapy. We see the benefits of them hanging out with the elders and reconnecting with them. This uh, structured language assessment, we want to uh, link language learning. And the way I can explain it is just like we're going on a journey uh, or, or let's say a paddling journey. And uh, we're paddling and then we get to a certain point and we put a marker down and then we just keep on paddling. And once in a while we can kind of look back. And we also always can paddle back to that first marker if we get kind of lost but it's always constantly marking w along this journey so that's basically the framework of this model and it's indigenous in nature 
Um, it's uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to always say like we made this here. It's like uh, the Navajo have a lot to do with it. So I work with um, uh, Michelle Whitstone, who is a PhD, who's just about finishing her PhD, and then just like Belinda's work as well. Um, she's she's just about finished her PhD. So you have all these very intelligent indigenous ladies or scholars that are published already that I've co-presented with or presented at the same conferences and I know their work. Um, those type of people are change like they're changing policy. They're changing um, the way we do things, ass developing assessment tools that work for us. Uh, because we know our kids and we know, um, you know, where the, the issues are. We know where they come from. We know the language. We can communicate with them. So it makes, like, all those make it so much more easier. So you're not forcing uh, a, an assessment or a program on somebody when it's developed from, from the community like that. But again... We had to go through the university to understand these assessments or to understand these frameworks. So it's helpful to go that route. Um, so you know and you understand um, how to communicate in that academic world. But then also to know those pipe teachings, to know those medicines, to know how those protocols that, that you saw, you know, even this morning, uh, to understand that... Um, you know, why the woman's pipe and the man's pipe were taught, but then to flip on this side to say, oh, okay, you know, let's talk about mental health because there's this, there's this Gabor Mate that's saying something really interesting about mental health and uh, the trauma, you know, that's, if not dealt with, uh, you know, eventually it will alert, you know, it'll lead to addictions or Bruce Perry, Dr. Bruce Perry, and they're both doctors, uh, talking about um, mass trauma, you know, um, what suicide does to communities and then how to heal communities, you know. So th these type of people and their research and their uh, resources that they develop, I'm hoping this is what this is because this is all locally developed but with the help of us learning how to do that type of research and then also to connect those important um, important people that are doing that work right now, you know. The resource development, uh, we, we needed a resource that would keep us um, sort of in line to keep with the mandate from the elders. We needed a place where we not to veer too far into that academia side, but also just to, you know, the two-eyed seeing, I guess, is, is how I would say it. And, um, and then also uh, the parents wanted their kids just to be as literate, but they also saw the benefit of keeping uh, the language and culture within uh, the programming. So we needed to find ways to assess that development on both sides because if you go to the school you'll see SRO which is standardized Ro uh, standard Roman orthography but you also see syllabics and then there's a little bit of English here and there but you, you still see Roman you know uh, which is a standard Roman orthography both are beneficial because um, you can teach literacy we spent a lot of time researching balanced literacy as well, so that's that's uh, another thing there too that I want to stress. And then also cult having culturally relevant uh, curricula is another buzzword to understand uh, the effects of decolonization or colonization and uh, to understand what decolonization also is. And then um, also we when you first walk into the school you'll see also the the treaty flag there and um so we do a lot of treaty teachings as well to understand the relationship um to our to the lands uh to our all our relatives that i was saying 
and then also um, there was there was another chapter that's going to be a part of this assessment and it has to deal heavily with mental health um, mental health is on our eyes right now and uh, a lot of the teachers that are coming out need a place to to learn about that especially how to take students out in a safe manner and um, let's say if they need alone time even how do you meditate or how do you have that solo time um, and how do you do it in a safe manner so there's all these different certificates like Outdoor Council of Canada that we've worked with uh, Paddle Canada we work with Red Cross with Wilderness First Aid um, Outward Bound Canada we've worked with so it's like uh, all these different guides and all their models uh, trappers education um, uh, food handling courses there's all these different things that you can implement in there um, and we've taken good pieces that would fit sort of what we want and also stay true to what they wanted as organizations as well because um, it's just uh, good work that that all of them have done you know and I think by adding the First Nation perspective improves them as well. It helped us shape, and it's helping us shape the curriculum. Because we're in year two, and then what's different about the school here is we've, we've opened the summer up to be part of the school. So which means, uh, you know, we take a little longer breaks here and there, but also, um, let's say if there's a powwow or a ceremony on the weekend, we'll take that powwow and we'll take our students there to go dance, and then that's phys ed, that's uh, native studies, that's um, history, that's, you know, th so those components are, are part of that. Uh, so that's, that's a huge difference. Um, and then also... Uh, we like to travel, we like to move, you know, um, we like to create those, uh, to visit other places, other First Nations. Um, I think in the future here, we'll be going out straight down to Chapways um, to go visit them and take part in their hockey academy. Uh, and they have an amazing hockey academy down there, but also uh, give them a little bit of uh, what we're doing up here in terms of language and culture and then share uh, things that have been working with us. It might not work for them, who knows, but at least they, you know, just like us, maybe they can try some things um, and then just keep the ones that, that work. Uh, same thing with Onion Lake Immersion School, you watched them. They are so giving and they were so open to working with us and sort of being the big brothers and sisters, you know. Any question that we had, we would go over there and they, and then vice versa, um, when they want to take their kids out, like dog sledding, because nobody does the dog sledding down there or snowshoeing, you know, some of the odd little things that we do, they'll bring their kids here, you know, so that relationship is still ongoing. Um, another thing that this document will help you do is also give you the, um, to, to take that responsibility back, but also to take that pride back to say, as a parent, what is important for me to pass on or what type of legacy do I want to pass on or leave to my grandchildren so it gives it gives that light or that time to be listened to finally you know as elders you saw them sitting there and all every single one of them has like when I went in there and like hey what, when are you gonna come visit or you know where have you been so I tease back like, you guys are never home you guys are so busy you know so th that type of thing they they want to visit and um, a lot of them, um, they're ready. They're ready to share their life experiences. So I think that's what this document will do. It'll give you the, uh, um, it'll give you that uh, a way to do that, a way to localize that develop uh, the curriculum. Treaty, like we, we work with the Office of the Treaty Commissioner 
And then in teaching treaties, uh, because they, they've been mandated by the province to teach in every school in the province, um, it, it helps us because we really respect the treaty. And um, we, try to, we try to share that in, like we teach out of the kit. You know, they develop an amazing kit from kindergarten to grade 12. And with all the resources that are in there, it's really well done. Um, I think that's what that's what those two documents that we've developed here, like that are that we're going through, um, like our our hands right now and our minds and our hearts, is that uh, uh, those two together will give the possibility of other camps or other schools or communities if they want to do that as well, try it out. And I still don't know. Like, I know there are going to be tools at the end, right? But how much impact would they have to somebody that's kind of like starting where we're just starting, you know? Um, those assessment tools, they have to look a little different as well because of the complexity. Like, mental health is really, really big. And then also poverty uh, is a really big, big one as well. So how do you stretch... Um, something that's stretched already, you know, in, in a positive way or in a way where uh, it, it'll it work and function. So it, it's it's complex like that, but that's kind of like the, going back to the Wisagi Tech and the Wolf, it's it's like an adventure, right? Um, these are things we've tried and like we're not perfect, we've failed and then we'll, we'll write about it and then we'll write a different way because we know, you know, that's what happened. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll try something else. There was an, a new one that just came out and it was just published by Springer. And it, and it was, uh, it had to do with teacher education programs. Uh, and I think it was geared towards indigenous teachers around the world. And Onoa MacGyver and her husband, and then there was another one that put out the call, and they have everything in there from curriculum to teacher education programs to um, camps like this. Yeah, so we we actually got published in there, and I think I'm sure Belinda's got her chapter in there as well, and then uh, Heather Blair out of Sildi has a chapter in there with her team as well. So there's a lot of different language scholars that have been in a game, just not in Canada, but in the States and then also uh, internationally. So it's really nice to, that. that's one I like. Uh, like indigenous researchers, we came up with a word and um, we've always had researchers and we've always had storytellers. So that's the thing that I want to tell indigenous uh, scholars right now is like, just take it back, you know, that's all you're doing. And then it'll benefit uh, so many generations if you take that model as well to kind of cross-reference it to some of the elders. If they say, well, this isn't my knowledge, this is actually communally ours, but we're playing it forward, you know. I think that's key as well. There's some wisdom to that. Um, but we need more. We need more scholars. And we need more publications talking. And I'm being... Uh, how would you say, like, uh, selfish here, but like in indigenous languages, we need people, more people to write about that because, uh, I want to hear, um, you know, in, uh, hockey, I want to hear, uh, boxing, I want to hear football, uh, in Cree, you know, I want to, I want to hear movies in Cree. And uh, if we can develop speakers at the elementary age, they'll possibly be our next Brad, Brad Pitt or, um, you know, uh, an amazing pop artist that might come out. Uh, so, and singing, you know, in, in one of our indigenous languages. So that's the key is to develop them. And then when they're older, uh, who knows what they can become, you know, now they're, they're speaking in Ottawa. I heard Cree and I, I, I've translated in Cree. I've heard Dene, I've heard Mi'kmaq, I've heard uh, all these different languages in Uktitut, you know, beautiful, you know, translating 
the debate, this last, you know, debate was all done in all those different languages, and it was just beautiful to hear that.